Hi everyone, this is Rob Gray from ASU and the Perception Action Podcast, back with another article review. In this episode, I want to talk about the topic we've talked about lots of times on this podcast, focus of attention instructions. This one, I think, you know, I, one of the things I've lamented a lot in this podcast is there's too many studies that have just tested the basic effect, like just compared internal versus external and showed a benefit of our external in the different sports skill. There's so many of those. I don't think they add a whole lot myself. This one, I think, puts an interesting twist on things. So, you know, if you've been living under a rock or in, you may have missed this, but in sports science, you know, I call this in my second book, there's a tidal wave of evidence showing the benefits of an external focus of attention where you direct a, performance, a performer to the effects their movements have on the environment over an internal focus of attention where you direct a performer to their actual movements, their, their body, right? And as I said, there, you know, this is a systematic review published a few years ago. The first study was in 1998. There's 73 studies across a lot of different skills that have demonstrated superior performance for external focus of attention study, uh, instruction. And there's 40 studies that have shown better learning, better skill acquisition when given external focus of attention instructions. I should note there's a paper that just came out that it kind of challenges this. Um, suggesting that these effects may be kind of a reporting bias, you know, uh, kind of a file drawer kind of problem, if you if you if you know what that is, uh, by McKay at all. I haven't had a chance to dig into that deeply, but but for now, you know, I think that most people would agree that there's a pretty strong evidence in support of the external focus of attention, right? Um, what we're gonna the skill we're gonna focus on today, we're gonna look at mixed martial arts and particular striking or boxing. Here's a study that's shown, as I mentioned, there's almost any sports skill you can think of. There's a study that's investigated this. Halperin and all, Israel Halperin and all, who I had on my podcast a long time ago, um, did a study um, in 2017 looking at uh, instructions for boxers, right? So having them, and they measured uh, the force and the speed of punching, right? When they were instructed to uh, focus internally on the execution of the, moving their arm as fast, as forcefully as possible, versus hitting the target as quickly as possibly as possible and there was a clear benefit of the external focus right when you were directed to hitting the the destruction were focused on the target rather than what your hand was doing so the classic effect what how can we explain this the typical explanation and i want to get into this in the end of the podcast is what has been called the constrained action hypothesis right is the idea is that when you're um, when you become skillful at something, right? The traditional view is that the skill becomes automatized. You reach a level of automaticity where you're not reg consciously regulating your movements, right? You're not holding the positions of your limbs and working memory and and consciously controlling, thinking about what your hands are doing, what your wrists are doing, right? When you direct attention inwards, that um, you're going back, you're essentially pushing the performer back to an earlier stage of skill acquisition, right? Um, the, the earliest stage where you're thinking about every step you're doing and you're not as fluent, you're not as efficient, right? So the what conscious control of movement, so the, it holds that adopting an internal focus of attention, which is supposedly associated with conscious control of movement, constrains the motor system by interfering with automatic motor control processes that would normally regulate the movement. The basic idea has been that it, Dis disrupts automaticity. With the growing popularity of the ecological dynamics and the ecological approach, people have kind of attached and also given the slight alternative that, that it's disrupting self-organization, which are those are very different things. I'll talk about that later, right? But that's the basic idea that thinking, uh, for getting a person to focus on what their body is doing gets them to turn their attention inwards and drop something that's it disrupts something that's happened automatically. And I represent this in a picture in my second book, right? When you your golf coach tells you to smash the ball down the center, this is the self-organization. You self-organize your movements. You, if you want to do the alternate approach, they happen automatically. The, the motor program runs off without you having to focus on each step. Um, after, you, if instead your coach tells you to turn your hip open, right, when you're swinging, that draws your attention to your hip. Now you're trying to control what your hip is doing from the top down, which disrupts self-organization, which breaks automaticity, right? That's the idea. So the important point for this study, right? What the authors wanted to test in this study is the more automatized the movement becomes, let's, let's run with the traditional explanation for a while. The more automatized the movement becomes, 
the more detrimental internal, more beneficial external focus of attention instruction should be relative to internal one, right? The more you practice, more so if, if it's really internal focus is disrupting automaticity, external isn't, then the more automatized a, a skill become, the more disruptive an internal focus should be, okay? And so th there's a few different ways to test this. One, of course, is looking at a skill level effect, right? So um, more experienced athletes should have greater benefits for e external over internal because their skills are more automatized, right? They're, they reach a higher level, more level of automaticity, right? The research on this has been kind of, there is slight, some studies that have find, found that, but overall, most studies have found external benefits for no matter what level you're at, including myself and some of the baseball studies I've done. The second one, and the interesting twist the authors are going to look at here, is comparing your non-dominant hand and your dominant hand. And um, Baylock and Carr, Sion Baylock and Carr, have looked at this a little bit in soccer dribbling tasks with your, your dominant, do dominant foot. Um, the idea here is your dominant hand, you, you practice the skills like punching so many times, right? Your, sk your skills should be highly automatic, right? If you really follow those traditional Fitz and Posner model of skill acquisition, your, your, your movement should be highly automatic. Okay, versus your non-dominant hand, which you don't use nearly as much, maybe that's less automatic. You're still controlling the movements by thinking about what your out each, each step is involved. So internal focus shouldn't be that disruptive. That's the, the basic idea. And that's what the authors wanted to talk, talk about. This was a paper published in the International Journal of Sports Psychology. External focus of attention. They're going to look at um, punching. They're going to look at the task of making backhanded striking motions. They're going to compare three things, internal, external, and holistic, right? Holistic cues are an interesting, holistic cues are interesting. Um, they are external focus of attention cues. I, I consider them. They're external focus of attention because they're not getting you to focus on your body. They're getting you to focus on the overall quality of the movement, right? So move smoothly, right, is external focus of attention. Uh, explode like a rocket right? That's a, a holistic cue. It's getting you to focus on the overall quality or feeling of the movement rather than the mechanics or rather than the effect it's having on the environment. And there's lots of research shown that the holistic cues can be very beneficial. I'm a big fan of them. I use them a lot myself. Um, so they included that in the study, right? So they had 13 uh, karate uh, athletes, right? So people doing karate, uh, lots of experience, um, at least one year experience. Um, they this is a within subject design, so they're gonna each participant is gonna partic participate in each of the three uh, queuing conditions in random order. Uh, they're punching a bag. They're making backhanded punches against a bag. They have an opt track motion tracking system, so they can measure the movements. They can measure the force generated. Um, as I mentioned, it's reverse punching. It. So pretty, pretty straightforward design, as I said. Okay. The instruction here's the instruction condition internal. Focus on moving your arm as fast as you as possible. So directing your attention inwards toward your body and the mechanics okay, of the movement, classic manipulation. External focus of attention instruction. Focus on hitting the target as as hard as possible, right? So again, now the, the attention is drawn to the effect you want to have on your environment, the, the hand hitting the target. So focusing on the, the uh, definitely external and holistic. Focus on feeling explosive while punching, right? Again, I would don't lump this in as a type of specific type of external, right? Because it's drawing you to, it's drawing you to uh, something, the effect your movement having, but it's more the overall quality of the effect rather than focusing on something specific, right? So those are the three types. Um, here's what they found. So the first thing they did was measure the impact force on the bag, right? And here we have uh, the peak impact force for the three different uh, conditions. So people did strikes with their preferred hand and their non-preferred hand, or you know, non, non. Um, they didn't use dominant versus non-dominant because some people that's not always the same, right? For people in, in the MMA, and what they found was that uh, you get higher peak impact forces in the external condition than an internal. Okay, um, so in external was best, consisting with, with other research, right? Um, better than internal. There is no difference between holistic and internal or external, okay? 
Um, so that this supports the previous research, maybe not ones that have shown benefits of, of holistic, but clear benefits, more force generated with external instruction, okay? Um, there was no effect of hand, other than people obviously hit harder with their preferred hand, right? In all conditions. But there was no interaction, no statistical interaction in that you weren't, the, the effect, difference between internal and external was the same whether you hit in, with your dominant, your preferred hand or not. External was better for both of those, right? So this does not support that automaticity argument, right? It's not what we'd expect. The more automatized your preferred hand did not show greater benefits for external focus as compared to your non-preferred hand, statistically, okay? The other thing they measured was wrist velocity, right? So they measured uh, the, the wrist velocity. Um, in uh, overall, there was a higher wrist velocity in external focus condition compared to internal, classic effect, but there was no benefit of holistic. Again, this may, may be, um, the authors talk about, maybe the holistic cue they, not, they used did not was not the best one. They didn't get the results of this. For this one, they did find the interaction they were looking for, right? So um, you, you obviously had higher risk velocity in your preferred hand versus your non-preferred hand, but there's also a statistically statistical interaction. Higher pre um, um, the benefit of the external compared to the internal was only present when you were using your preferred hand. When using your non-preferred hand, both of those conditions were equal, right? So this supports the idea of the constrained action hypothesis. Um, you know, this this result does is consistent with the idea that more automatized skill hitting with your preferred hand will benefit more for external focus of attention. So I guess overall partial support. The discussion. So according to the constrained action hypothesis, um, we'll, we'll obviously we allow the idea constrained action hypothesis you're disrupting automaticity. The this advantage would be reverse reduced or even maybe reversed if we're using a movement that is not automatized yet because you haven't, you haven't experienced it enough, either because you're lower skill level or it's your non-dominant hand, okay? There is partial evidence to suggest the advantage only emerged in the more um, automated preferred hand and not the preferred hand, okay? They get this for, um, but not for impact force, okay? And they suggest possibly that uh, only for velocity, not for impact force, uh, possibly the way the holistics was formulated did insufficiently direct. Um, they they questioned whether the holistic cue they gave was actually directing one of the bad, right one of the things that have been criticized about uh, focus of attention experiments is the information you're getting by directing the person to that location is not the same for each, right? And maybe uh, hitting explosively if we had it talked about putting a hole in the bag or something like that, maybe that would have been a better holistic cue. Okay. Um, they, um, they, they, there's an interesting one uh, talk. They can ask what's more, what the interesting discussing, why they got an effect for velocity, but not force, right? Um, the, uh, the, this, this is interesting to me. They, they think it's more important for velis, the risk velocity is what you're trying to control. It forces a result right? Me, I think about it the opposite way. The force is what matters, right? Um, and velocity is almost uh, like going, in, if you look at my latest book, uh, impact force is the outcome. You want to be invariant. You want to hit really hard. Velocity, how you actually move and what joints your wrist, how much your wrist accelerates, etc., cetera, is, is a part of the technique that can vary, right? So uh, to me, it's force is the most important variable here, obviously. Um, um, wrist velocity, maybe we saw, uh, a, that difference between internal and external because wrist velocity is more, is, is part of the technique, right? That might vary, um, where peak outcome force is the outcome, right? So that has to remain. We just want to maximize that. So there's some interesting discussion there. Okay. Here is my kind of thoughts on this. First of all, the constrained action hypothesis. This study gives some evidence for it. Personally, I think it's time we retire the constrained jack Jim hypothesis. Um, if you go back to episode 326, uh, I talk about that I think the concept of automaticity in motor learning is an outdated one, right? In ecological approach, there's no, it doesn't make any sense, right? 
Um, the idea that you through practice, you learn to control your movements less by top down control and let them self organize. You do that the whole time in ecological approach. So it doesn't have a lot of meaning. Automaticity. Uh, look, see also my episode where I talk about the, that concept of motor memory. I think this idea that uh, internal is disrupting automaticity, even in, in a traditional approach, people have changed their view on the role of conscious control. Um, see my episode again, see that episode. I go into all this. So I don't think that I think this is not a really sensical hypothesis anymore. At the time, it made sense. But with our new thoughts about how motor learning occurs and skill acquisition, motor control with things like ecological dynamics, I don't think the concept of automaticity just doesn't fit anymore. I think it's more talk talk about um, outcome focus, right? Um, focusing on the outcome, right? Hitting the target, right? Is, I've, is, is focusing on the invariant, the force you're generating is allowing for better self-organization to occur. It's a common constraint I use all the time. Right in my in my coaching, in my, I I change the outcome I want people to generate to change how they self organize uh, when they do it. External focus of attention and instructions are better because they're educating an observer's attention. They're they're directing observer's attention to information which helps them better self organize. Right. Um, this is that the outcome is what you self organize around. The body will create a, a, a soft assembly of the technique to, to generate that, right? So this should be true for both novices and experts, which for the most part is we find in the research, external is still better no matter what your skill level, and for dominant versus dominant non-dominant hand, which we found in this was found in this study. If you consider the outcome variable, the important variable force, right? So I think this study adds to the overall. And as I said, I think it's time we move around, uh, beyond this idea that. The main benefit of external focus of attention is it stops the disrupting of aut automaticity because automaticity does not, we, that's not what we're trying to strive for in motor learning anyway anymore um, when we think about an ecological approach. So so that that's just my two cents. Uh, an interesting study. Again, I like the twist on on testing something other than just internal versus external. The, very, the preferred versus non-preferred hand was a very interesting manipulation. So I, I give the author, authors kudos. So that's it for today's episode. Thanks for joining me. Cheers for now and keep them coupled.